don't get sucked into people's um, own agendas of what they need. You know, you just make sure that you serve the product, you serve the movie, always. I heard you say in another interview that a common thing for a lot of filmmakers, actors, screenwriters is that they think their first film is going to sort of set the trajectory for mm -hmm. the rest of their career. Like they, they, maybe they get a lot of praise, they walk the red carpet, mm -hmm. pe people are, are you know emailing you, and you think that it's up from there mm -hmm. and that it's actually very humbling to see that it's not? Yes, I do. Um, certainly, I was humbled, our crew was humbled, our group. Um, you know, the first film we did, you know, had, uh, you know, Andy Garcia in it, you know, a whole bunch of people. There was red carpets, there was uh, premieres, there was um, all kinds of great screenings and everything else. And, you know, you, you kind of put, you know, uh, Weinsteins are calling you, the agencies are calling you. And you realize that we're not given in this world, in this universe of film that we've decided to be in, um, there is no stability in it. I mean, there's there's no the trajectory is uh, is what it becomes, and you have to make it. Um, it never goes to easy street. Um, and we were doing a lot of things, um, you know, trying to thinking that we were trying to get this bigger film made. You know, it's just you're going to do this one the size, and the next one's going to be the next size. Well, it turned out the next one was half the size, and then the next one half the size of that. So. That is my filmmaking journey. It doesn't go like that. It's all over the place. And I realized that, um, you know, we can go back to the original idea, which is just to keep working and not let anything get in the way, not let all the needs to set things up here and set things up here and raise all this money. Let's find a way to just keep making films and add value. And so my trajectory went through, you know, this kind of organic film school. Because when I was with the first film, I didn't really understand much about what was going on. There was a bunch of experts around me that knew everything. And they said, you know, you're the big boss. And so you go over there and you get an assistant and do all this different stuff. And it was really cool. But I didn't, if I, I didn't know everything that was all the, the different machinations of what was happening and it cost us frankly um if i would have known that now i'd have been like wait a minute you don't need that and this and that you could just have that why are we paying for all three but i didn't know any better and so so the the, the you know i you know i wouldn't change a thing you know i learned so much now i can do everything now i know about all the different elements of the film business. It's funny, sometimes we do production services and you see directors come in and they don't know these things. They don't know, you know, they just say, I just want this. And it's like, oh, okay, but you don't need that. But, but I want it because they say we want it and everything else. But now I know what we want and need. It, we, I can distill it down to what's on the screen. Because at the end of the day, if you want to keep your budgets at the level that you can keep working consistently in independent film, you have to just worry about what's on that screen. Because what's behind it may not, it might not always be very pretty to watch the sausage being made. But um, as long as we get what we want on the screen, then that's what matters. As long as we get into the edit and we can have everything we need, that's what, that's what counts. And so, um, you know, we do sometimes smaller films now. We do a little bit larger films um, and we can do them all. And we're comfortable at all budget levels. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's about the expectations that people have and you know, the optics you need to create for a client, which is all money. I tell them that too. I said, if you let us do it and you're not worried about it, then we can do it for less. If you're there watching us, you know, everything is gonna be a little bit more because it's our job to make sure that the optics are, are correct and you have a certain type of experience that you're 
expecting. And you said you had people, maybe well-meaning, in your ear saying it needs to be this way. Mm -hmm. And so maybe more money was spent or things were done in a different way. How much exposure to the industry did you have growing up? You said you lived in LA briefly or? I did, I had almost none. Um, j just, especially not production. Um, I had been on working for um, a guy by the name of Ron Shusett for a while, <clears throat> who's the um, writer producer of Alien, Total Recall, Minority Report. And, you know, I was on the development side with him and working with his management to, to get some projects off the ground. But as far as on-set production, it was just this huge mystery to me. Um, and, you know, it feels glamorous. You know, it's like you're on set and all these things are going on and all these people with the headphones and, and they're calling you sir. And it's, it's really uh, intoxicating. Um, but, I, but, so, but I had really no real idea of what was what was going on, um, you know, other than the basic leadership stuff. Okay, I make sure that everybody's paid and things of that sort. But, um, you know, as far as uh, knowing the, the intricate details of production, I really didn't know much at all. And, 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 but you need to know. You need to know a lot. Because if people will tell you, you need this kind of camera and you need these things with the camera, and you need this and that and this and that, and you're doing a shot that could be done on sticks with a doorway dolly. And you don't always need everything they're talking about. You need, so in order for you to be able to look at them squint-eyed and say, please don't tell me you need that because I know we don't need it. I know exactly what we need and we can just do it like that. So this is, part of that learning process, you know, over, you know, failure and um, all of the things that you learn through a trial and error and failure, frankly. And so for a first film, a director or producer may have to take it a little bit and nod their head and then maybe after what, third film, they can have that conversation? Yeah, uh, first film um, is, you know, you're nervous half the time, you know, you just, it's a lot of pressure to direct a film. <clears throat> and it's more pressure than I think people are, think it's gonna be. I've seen it drive people literally crazy. And they just go crazy and just start doing crazy things and saying crazy things. And I'll tell you, um, you know, um, once you get that through, through that process, then, you know, you at least you know you can get through it and you know that you can get through it emotionally. Um, and you know, you learn a lot from that. And your second, third projects, yeah, then you can start to tell people, hey, I know what we need. I know what we need. I know we don't need that. Um, and you know, you learn to listen to people around you that you trust and make sure that you don't get sucked into people's um, own agendas of what they need. You know, you just make sure that you serve the product, you serve the movie, always. And you just keep that in mind, always. You're serving the final product. You serve the final edit more than you do, you know, um, getting all this crazy outside coverage that you know that you'll never need, you know. so but that comes from experience. And it has to be a full process, meaning through the edit. Because the edit, it, editing is the most important thing I've learned, is editing. Because what that teaches you is what you need and what you don't need. I don't know if you just watch a cut of your film six months after you shoot it, you don't know how they made those decisions to get to there. If you sit there with the editor, you know, okay, we're gonna go from here, geog create the geography of the room, we're gonna get cut into coverage, you know, what is the point of the film? We're gonna have to, you know, they shake hands, let's get that on an insert or a special, and then you cut back out to the geography. If you, when you edit, you learn that. So when you're in there filming, um, you know that that's what you need, and so you don't have to beat up your actors with something on some shot list or, a lot of uh, storyboards that maybe somebody have, might have done for you, you can just say, I got it, and 
a lot of people will thank you for that. You know. Is there a way to handle agendas with finesse? Yeah. Well, I I, I personally have a very calm um, directing style and producing style. I don't get bent out of shape, but you try to listen to what they are saying, and you listen to it, and then you have to just say, well, I just we don't need that, or we do need it. If they have an agenda, meaning if they're thinking, hey, this is going to be a shot for my reel as a DP or something, um, I want the shot for your reel too, if we can afford it, and if we have time, and if it makes sense. Other than that, we're going to have a shot for the end cut of the movie. And, and so you just have to be firm. But if people look at you and you're talking to them, they'll know if you know what you're talking about or not. It's very hard to look at somebody and say, hey, uh, you know, I know that we need this and that and that and this or this shot and this and that. And I look at them and say, no, we don't. We don't need it. And we've got everything we need on the scene. And I know you want the big boom up, dolly down, crossover, push in. I get it. I want that too. But um, we got to move on. So, so you just be kind about it. Um, you know, I don't yell or anything like that. But, you know, you must assert your authority um, on a set because there's too much going on to not have a clear line of authority. And so I make sure that I do that with kindness, but with, but I'm relatively firm about it. Do you think the agendas are stronger in Los Angeles or in Mexico or they're different agendas? You know, this is an opinion uh, very much stronger in Los Angeles. Um, you know, when you have American crew, I've, ha I've done scenes here, days of filming here. It's a very, very different thing. You get people that are very much concerned about how they're going to look, be perceived, be blamed, things of that sort. And they'll t you'll hear a lot in the States of, hey, this is going to have my name on it. So it's got to, I don't feel comfortable with this. Uh, uh, my name's on there as the gaffer, so I need to make sure that the lighting's right. Um, I don't find that in Mexico at all. Um, and I work with a few crews there. Um, they, it's just the work ethic is a little bit different. Um, they defer to the, to the director, I think, a little bit more. But then, look, if you're going to build a career in L.A., you've got to get a reel. You've got to get a bunch of different stuff going on. And it's important. Um, you know, you, you have to keep your, the quality of your work at a certain level and you have to keep your reputation as somebody easy to work with at a certain level um, and that your work is done well. You can't, well, you know, that gaffer uh, uh, completely messed up the lighting, then you, you may never work again or it might be difficult to work again. So, so there's a lot more pressures. I don't blame them for it. It's, but it's, but it's different and, and, um, you know, uh, I do, when your gaffer or whatever has their own website, <laughs> you know, and their own reel, uh, you know, that's like, okay, that's, but, you know, that shows that, look, that's what they're kind of supposed to do. They're, they're supposed to get themselves out there. But, you know, when you're talking about, because all this is fixed with a lot of money. If you have a huge budget, then you can have those people. But when you're, when you know that you're going to be in the trenches of an indie, you know it's going to get sticky, you know that everything's not going to go perfect, then you have to, loyalty and uh, loyalty to the project and the product has to take precedent. I have a saying, and that's that I always protect the film over protecting myself. I protect the project. That means I got to take a lot of crap sometimes a lot of abuse, but it has to always, what I'm doing has to always serve the final product. And if I have to take a little bit of someone yelling at me, or whatever the case is, then I'll take it. Um, I find that sometimes in LA, uh, there's a lot of fighting and bickering sometimes. I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes, and they just, you know, people are upset and 
this guy's yelling at this guy and this guy and this that. But another reason I think that is is because a lot of times you'll go onto a set and the gaffer will never have work with the grip and the sound boom guy never work with the sound mixer. It's like everybody comes in for like and then gets used to each other. In Mexico, our crew is set. We work together all the time. So we, we it's like a shorthand. So um, so we know everybody's temperament and you, you learn to weed out people that don't have the correct temperament for what we're trying to do. So once you do your 10th film or so, you know where your, where your, where your weak points are. And, um, and then you know where your strong points are. So you say, you always, have, you always have the ability to do the film with just a very small core group. Um, and so, and that protects the film, you know. You let, you know, in certain films, maybe in the States, one or two people go, it's like the film can't be done that day. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we can switch out loop positions and places and parts, so it all makes sense. So, um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, um, it's much different, in my, my opinion, much different from um, Los Angeles to Mexico, but it's just different. It doesn't mean it's better or worse. It's just different. And so, um, but for the money that we try to put everything on the screen, so we just try to keep it as streamlined as possible.